here's the intro to Taj Mahal's version of Statesboro Blues. It's got the great Jesse Edwin Davis on guitar. Um, it's from Taj Mahal's first album called Taj Mahal. Amazing album. And the story goes that um, Jesse Edwin Davis hadn't played slide before and Taj Mahal just said, well, can you play slide on this? The, the irony is that Ry Kuda was playing rhythm guitar in these sessions. So you got one of the, you know, the greatest slide players of all time playing rhythm guitar while Jesse Edwin Davis um, allegedly is, is, you know, the inexperienced player playing this, but um, it's, it's a wonderful part. It's a great way into um, blues slide guitar playing. It's in standard tuning, key of E. Um, you get some really nice ideas from this. And then what happened next, of course, was Dwayne Allman was inspired by hearing and seeing Taj Mahal play this song. Um, and, you know, the rest is history as far as he was concerned. Uh, so it's always worth checking out the Allman Brothers version of this as well for comparison. So let's dive in. So the first phrase that we're going to play is based in E minor pentatonic. It involves sliding from the 12th fret on the top string down to the 10th fret, so and then playing the 12th fret on the 2nd string, so and then putting vibrato on that note. Okay, so we're sliding from E to D and then into that D note with some vibrato. Right hand, um, you can use thumb and index finger. I was using middle finger and first finger initially. Or just thumb and index. You just want to let that ring. You want to make sure you're muting all these lower strings. If you haven't seen um, the, the videos I've done on, on slide technique, I'd, I'd thoroughly recommend checking that out first, um, just in terms of the muting and how much pressure to put on the slide and how to do vibrato and all these things. Um, you know, in this video, I'll, I'll assume you've seen that and we'll just get into the song. Um, but if not, ch check those out. So, first phrase. That's your first bar. And then we're gonna slide in. So just sliding up to the 12th fret on the 2nd string and then playing the 1st string at the 12th fret. And then sliding down. So sliding from the 10th to the 8th fret. And then that's the, your E note. And then... So what's happening here is you're kind of resolving to... If you imagine an E, like an A-shaped bar chord, but the seventh fret, so it's E, and basically this little triad here, you're kind of centered around there. So he's doing the classic kind of going from going to the minor third and then up to the major third. So you got. last two notes ring into each other so when you go from the 10th fret slide down to the 8th fret then you play your E note on the 3rd string and then let those last two notes ring into each other you slide up on the 9th fret slide up to that 9th fret on the 2nd string and keep it ringing while you play the 3rd string so the second phrase goes Just a punctuated slide down, so you're doing a double stop at the ninth fret on strings two and three, and just sliding down. So I'll play the whole of the first three bars, which is these first two phrases. So. When you work through this, you want to work on it phrase by phrase and then piece them together one after the other. So you do the first phrase, you learn the second phrase, then you put phrase one and two together, then you learn the third phrase, then you put one, two, three together, and you just build it up piece by piece rather than trying to race in and do the whole thing in one go. So the next phrase, 
um, which is on the last bar of the E seventh chord before it goes to A, is on the twelfth fret of the second string. So one, two. So it's basically a couple of extra notes and then repeating the first phrase. So. So that second part of it is exactly the same as the very first phrase we did. And you're just starting by going. Again, we're just kind of thinking, thinking 12th fret, thinking E at the 12th fret. Um, classic kind of octave version of, of you know, what you're doing on the slide, rather than using the open strings, you, you come up here and it's got more emotional impact. But he's really just thinking kind of pentatonic type stuff and then, you know, around that E triad as, as we had. Now, the next phrase starts off like phrase um, phrase one, but it's, it's a repeated thing. So it goes... So you've got the, the three notes, and again, and then slide down from the 12th to the 10th fret, but don't add the other notes, so you've just got just the first two notes of it the last time. And then there's a slide down to the 10th fret, and then up to the 9th fret, and again letting those two notes ring like you did earlier. So. So the whole phrase, when you put those two pieces together, goes. Ring. And then, again, it's punctuated with that slide at the end, just off the ninth fret, strings two and three. So I'll play the whole thing up to that point. So one, two, three. I'll play that uh, that last phrase again. to the next phrase so we've got the 12th fret slide on the top two string so this is like the the third phrase we had which went it's doing the same thing but this time he's catching the top two strings on the first one so and, and he's playing on the first string so and then it's a different rhythm there, that the whole phrase goes one, two. So you've got this same little motif he's been using all the way through. And then he goes to the 10th fret on its own. And then the 12th fret on the second string. So again, I'll put the whole thing together from the beginning. So you know, if, if you're working through this um, and, and you're up to speed with it, you can try and play along when I do this, just, just to kind of piece it all together. So one, two, three, four. <laughs> the vibrato is on the last note of the phrases just on the long note to really let that note speak and then the last uh, part that we have just before a turnaround is the same motif again so those three notes and then, so let's just slide
sliding up to the 12th fret on the second string and then playing the first string. And then again doing that little thing with the E triad. So sorry. Before we go into the turn rung. So again. Basically, if you think about E seventh and you move it up, so now your first finger's on the fourth fret, you're playing fragments of that, so you're going fourth and fifth frets together and then the open first string. So and then just back to the third string. So it's going to be the same pattern each time. It's strings five and three, and the first string, just open, and then string three, then you drop it down one fret. doing is you're holding down the E chord, you hammer on with that first finger and then play the fifth string. And what I would probably do here is then shift to that B seventh chord at that point. So, so you're going hammer on that string there and while you're playing that you're shifting to the just the lower three notes of a B seventh chord. So that whole turnaround starts up at the fourth fret. I'm using fingers, uh, thumb and first finger, and then my third finger for the first string. But you could use your second finger conceivably. string so he's done uh, and then hits an open B and then goes into and then the vocals coming so I'll play that last three bars all together so three four because you've got this slide phrase that's the first slide phrase then you've got this connecting note which is that open B and then you're into so you've got to work on those pieces separately just do it very slowly separately I'm going to put the whole thing together at a kind of slowish tempo for you. So one, two, three, four. Four. turnaround it really picks up pace so you, you definitely want to spend some time it's such a great turnaround you can use it uh, you know any time you've got a blues in E 
um, it's it's a great one to use um, but just you you need to spend some time just piecing that together uh, so what I suggest you do with this is again just break it down into the individual phrases and work on those separately um, listen lots to the original recording I mean that's you know the first thing to do just so that you can almost sing the solo without the guitar in your hand you know what it sounds like um, and then piece it together bit by bit slowly um, maybe try practicing it over a backing track at a slow speed so you can just hear how it all fits together and then the final part of this is you know once you've got it together um, or even before you've got it completely together there's nothing stopping you using these ideas yourself so there's some great little snippets you know that little motif that he uses all the time in this um, just tiny little ideas from this that you could take into your own playing and do different things with and, and that's how you really develop your vocabulary. So, you know, as you learn solos and as you learn stuff, do take the time to then try and take that out and play it in other contexts and music that you're playing, or if you're jamming, try and use these ideas, and then they'll become something that you can actually use in your playing. If you like this video, if it's been helpful, uh, please comment below, let me know. Um, if you've got any questions, of course, I'm more than happy to answer. Uh, like the video, subscribe, and, um, I'll see you for the next one. Mm -hmm.